want to talk about why I'm making this video. The first reason is I've been carrying around this story with me for a very long time. Hardly anyone knows about my past and about my family and about what I have gone through to get where I am now. And I just wanted to share that with people. I hope that this video reaches people with similar stories. It changes everything to know that people in similar or even dissimilar situations as yours right now have gone through the same thing that you've gone through. And you're not the only person who has to hide themselves, who feels like they have to hide themselves every day, who walks into a room and can't connect with people because you feel so different. It's, it's, it's a lonely feeling and you walk into places and you feel like you don't belong because of where you came from. And I hope that this video does some work against that. Another reason I wanted to make this video is to dispel some of the myths about families and about what's normal and what's not normal. I think that a lot more families are dysfunctional than they realize. I want people to know that verbal abuse is not okay. It's never okay. It can sting just as much as physical abuse. It's the worst pain I've ever felt, without a doubt. I think that a lot of people experience abuse in their lifetime and they don't categorize it as such and they don't think of it as such because they experienced it at the hands of someone that they love. And I hope that people see that. I hope that people see that they're not alone. That any type of abuse, whether it be physical, verbal, emotional, anything, it's painful. It causes pain, it causes scars. So, I hope this brings awareness. Without further ado, let's get into this video. Okay, you little psych med retard. Uh, you're stupid. I'm sorry. I have, I have zero respect for you. You're completely fucking stupid. Uh, you're full of shit. Uh, your big pharma handlers don't give a shit about you. You're going to ruin your whole body. You're going to ruin your whole life. You're going to ruin your brain for life. I don't care what your little excuse is and how you believe in big pharma. You just showed me how fucking stupid stupid you are. How fucking stupid you are. And you watch what happens to your body and shit, you little fucking monkey. You little monkey that needs fluoride to fucking function. It's your fucking kidnapped, stupid existence with your retarded grandma. Okay? I don't know you. You're a dead fucking zombie. That's what you are, is a dead fucking zombie. I'm never talking to your grandmother again, and now I'm going to get these bitches. You're fucking stupid. Hi, I'm, I'm Sarah. The story I'm going to tell you, I've only told a handful of people, if, if that. Um, not even that. 
So I was born and raised in Bloomington, Indiana, and my my mom wanted me to be born in Indianapolis, but I wasn't having that, so I was born in Bloomington instead. I have a lot of earliest memories, but one of them was, um, I remember I must have been three years old and I was blowing out a candle and the next thing I remember, there was a big flame on my head um, and I didn't feel anything, but um, I remember my brother who was six years older than me, he was spitting on my head trying to put the flame out. Yeah, I survived that unscathed. The first time I noticed my family was a little different was probably around the first grade when I started going to school and I was around kids for the first time ever and they were my age. It wasn't a public school, it was a private school. Um, it was kind of more alternative, so the education was not rigorous. Um, it, was, it was a little different. Kids had a little bit more than me in terms of toys, in terms of vacations. My family, we never went on vacation hardly, but a lot of a lot of people in my class would go on vacation and come back and they would tell their stories and they would have pictures. And I remember being very competitive and very concerned with money and very concerned about having the most of something. I didn't see that in other kids. In between first and fourth grade, I uh, remember being bullied a lot for everything, for the way I dressed, for my hair, for my weight, for my teeth, for the way I smelled, um, because my mom smoked a lot of cigarettes and I would go to school smelling like cigarettes. I remember getting hit a lot, getting beat up a lot. Um, for no, for no reason. I remember they, they would pick on me because I never had, uh, I never had a dad come up and pick me up from school. And they would pick on me for that. I'd be crying usually, I'd end up crying eventually, every day after school, and I would get into big fights with my mom, big fights, um, because I would beg her not to confront other students' parents. There was a couple moments that my mom told off other parents, and I remember it was really scathing. She would leave messages on parents' phones and they'd be really scathing messages, really aggressive messages. The next day I'd go to school and I wouldn't have any friends. It would it would drive my friends away. I made the decision for myself to leave that school because I didn't want to have teachers treat me differently, which they were doing, and the students were treating me differently, and all of a sudden I remember being alone, and that, that, that felt so lonely, I remember. In, in hindsight, that was probably the beginning of my depression. From then on, my mom unschooled me, um, which is kind of a weird concept, but I educated myself on my own for about two years, from ages 10 to 12. It really wasn't any kind of schooling. It wasn't anything. It was just me doing my own thing for two years, which I don't recommend, but 
I came out of it. I wasn't allowed to go to public school. Um, I couldn't tell you why exactly. It just wasn't something that my mom wanted me to do. So I took my education into my own hands once again, and I decided to enroll in online school. And because of my decision to enroll myself into school, I am where I am academically, which is a good place, I think. Middle school, my middle school years, like age 12 to 14, I guess, I can definitely look back now and say that I was struggling with my severe depression. I was just so isolated and alone, especially going to school online every day, day in and day out, and having no contact with anyone. It, it made me suicidal, for sure. Um, the first time, the first time I tried to kill myself, I was 14 and my plan was to do it by hanging and I set everything up but eventually did, didn't do it. Um, I just thought about how hard I had worked in school. I didn't, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to end everything. I really didn't enjoy my home life um, whatsoever and I went to finish high school in two years total and I did it amazingly enough and I was looking at colleges for a while. I had started when I was 14 looking at colleges. That was that was the one thing that I wanted. I wanted to leave home and I wanted to get as far away as possible. So I was picking schools out of state and I was picking very rigorous schools, very elite schools, very challenging schools because academically I, I had always been a great student even at a young age. My mom was not happy at all about me wanting to go to college out of state and about me graduating early. I was graduating two years early and this had been f fuel to the fire for quite some time. My mom was very hard on me and when she gets angry she just lets everything out. I remember I must have been five years old and I was being a five-year-old. I don't know what I was doing, probably throwing a tantrum or something, but I remember my mom saying that she hates Virgos and I'm a Virgo. And I just remember being so upset because my mom hated me and I was five and I was just so upset about that. I can never remember the reasons for her being angry. It's more often than not that she's angry about something. And she, she would say, you know, you ruined my life. And that was always maybe the most hurtful, um, that I ruined her life and I'm actively ruining her life. But I remember driving around with her and she was saying stuff like that, that I ruined her life. And 
she was driving really recklessly um, out of anger and it was it was really scary. My mom has always been very bizarre with her thinking. She believes really strange things like her house is is bugged like people are listening to her in her house or that the water is is poison the tap water like she she wouldn't go out in the rain something's wrong with the rain so she's always had really weird beliefs that she's adamant about and Around the time I was picking out colleges, I picked one, the one that I'm currently at, and I was sure that I was going to go, as I did, but she just thought so strongly that the school is a scam, that it experiments on students, that it has some connection to aliens that it's evil and malicious and and she took that out on me. My mom would scream at me 24-7, day in, day out, um, all the time. I could be sleeping. She would still be screaming at me. And it got to a point where I couldn't take it anymore. I knew that I was going to college in two months, but I couldn't last that long. There was no way. Um, to make matters worse, I had gotten so depressed that I was failing half of my classes in high school. And if I didn't complete those, then I wouldn't be able to go to college. And that combined with the extremely explosive environment of my house, I just couldn't take it anymore. I was just so tired of the delusional, paranoid thinking that I couldn't get past. Like there was a barrier and I couldn't talk to my mom or tell her anything that was reasonable. She just believed what she wanted to believe. Um, that was really hard. One morning while arguing with my mom, I just decided this is it. I'm going to kill myself. There's nothing else that anyone can do. And this was when I was 16, about to go to college. She had hidden anything that could be harmful already because this was an ongoing thing. So I got inventive and I tied a garden hose up like a noose and I strung it up on the gutter and climbed on a pool ladder and I was so convinced that, that was the end and my mom was watching the whole time just yelling at me still not even trying to save me really at this point she didn't care she thought that, you know, I would do it and I would recover. That's what she thought. So she wasn't concerned. Again, I just thought about all the work I had done up to that point to academically to get where I was. And I didn't do it. But I felt so hopeless. I didn't know what else to do.
the interesting part of this story is that the whole time my mom was tweeting about what just happened with me trying to kill myself. And she was obsessed with Twitter at the time. She often, often neglected life, neglected her family um, to tweet. And she would tweet. She had thousands of tweets, hundreds of thousands of tweets um, on Twitter. And she would tweet all the time, just nonstop. The tweets that she made while I was trying to kill myself, they were saved. Um, my grandma saved them, or my auntie saved them. Um, as a record of what that was like. It says, but I didn't worry too much because I was like, oh, it's full moon too. So who knows, just crazy times and crazy chemtrails make note, that's it. So anyway, I lock everything up in all my room doors and she runs outside and tries to make the hose a noose on her gutter and takes the pool ladder to get into it. She said, I'm going to do it. I said, no, you aren't. I'm going to take you to the hospital. Um, and it just goes on. A lot of non sequiturs. At that, at that point, my grandma had already been looking at her Twitter um, pretty regularly to see what she tweets. And my grandma saw that she was tweeting about that and called Child Protective Services. And I wasn't aware of this at the time that she was doing this, but that's what happened. And so what happened was when that day I was volunteering, so I went to go volunteer and while I was working, a police officer came and asked me some questions and then took me to the hospital. Everything changed after that because I never, I never lived in that house again. So I went to the hospital and they asked me a bunch of questions to which my answer was, you know, I only did this because my mom She drives me up a wall. And I remember the nurse asking me if I felt safe at home. And I said no. And I really didn't feel safe at, at home. I didn't know what my mom would do. She hasn't really done anything. Um, to, I, she's just so unpredictable. I didn't know what she would do or could do. She was just so angry at me. I remember one time she did threaten to drive into a semi truck on my way to college. So I told the nurse, no, I don't feel safe at home. And uh, he cautioned me that if I say that, I could become a, a child of the state. And that didn't scare me too much.
It's so weird. I got a nosebleed. <laughs> and uh, that only happens when I'm really, really stressed. Usually fighting with my mom or having something to do with my mom. I get a nosebleed. The hospital staff eventually determined that I was fine to leave. Um, I wasn't a threat to myself, but they would not let me leave if I was going back to my mom's. And if they wanted me to have a plan so that I would not have to go back to my mom's because that wasn't an option to them. And that upset me because I didn't know anywhere else. I didn't know anything else. I didn't know anyone else. So they let me go. But the plan was that my great aunt was going to apply for guardianship and that was going to go through the courts and I was going to live with my auntie for the next two months until I got to college. And that was really different for me. The guardianship was won, obviously, and my mom was very upset about that. Um, she was very upset. She felt like she was criminalized, even though there was nothing criminal done to her. Um, she came out unscathed. I don't feel like I did. So I was 16 going to college and I remember my mom came. She didn't drive, but she came with. And I thought for sure she would get there and see how great everything was and change her mind. That didn't happen. She was just more miserable. And this is when I saw a therapist and was diagnosed with severe depression and severe anxiety. And that was that. It was also during this time that I started receiving text messages from my mom. Things like, and all this BS that you three stooges caused is coming back to you times infinity for eternity, you creep, troll, brainless, soulless, heartless, Gestapo, demented puppet. I can't even believe evil our words like you, MFs, even exist. And none of you creeps are sorry or want it to stop. There is nothing so vile in this universe as you ignorant evil creeps. And you all will be removed from life and God for eternity. Because you're all ass backwards, not existent, pure evil. And I would get messages like this times a thousand. There must be thousands of these messages on my phone. Um, from my mom and I would receive them like all day and all night just non-stop it's just hundreds hundreds of messages college has treated me well generally speaking and 
doing great academically. I'm involved in a lot of extracurriculars. I have a lot of friends. It's literally everything that I thought would be and more. Um, I just carry this around with me. This pain and this guilt, I suppose. Guilt of feeling like I ruined my family and like somehow just existing, I am hurting my mom. And I've given what she said to me and what she's done to me and the messages that she sends. I've gone a year without talking to her before. I've gone several months without talking to her before, but nothing ever seems to work. So I'm currently in contact with her still. And I'm seeking treatment for my severe depression and anxiety. Um, I have, I started a support group, a local support group for people with depression and bipolar disorder. Um, my mom is diagnosed bipolar. So I understand what that's like to some degree. I understand what it looks like. I still receive hundreds of hateful messages from my mom, but I've been learning to have that not bother me because I know she is sick basically. Um, her, her mind is not her, is kind of how I feel about it. But I know that for me, it gets better. It's been getting better. And I'm at a good place right now. So.